Where do you want to start today? Start on YouTube? Yeah. Are we live? Well, we're not live, as in like, people can't see us now. Oh. We've got to edit it. <laughs> not like we're live live. Right, welcome back to Sunday Q&A with me and seems to be the star of the show from now on. <laughs> Everyone seems to want you. Your answers were great yes, last year, week apparently. Mm. So. Thank you. Um, we're going to do what the same sort of thing. I'm going to ask the question, we'll let you answer it, and then I'll actually answer it again. Okay? I'll actually answer it. What we're contemplating next week is possibly doing this actually live at about five o'clock. So, not convinced it's the right way, but may give it a go next week. So, give us a comment down below about what you think. If you're watching this now, would you like to see it actually live? Ask us questions in the chat and we'll answer them there and then. But otherwise, Let's go on with the question. So we're going to go to YouTube first. Um, and this is from Nick Gray. And it's, why did you decide to go into YouTube, making your own channel? And how much equipment did you have to start with? Cameras, microphones, etc. And did I have, do you have any background in making films or did you just learn along the way? I directed all the Johnny Depp movies. <laughs> so that's where it came from. And Lee just piggy, big, piggybacked off me. <laughs> um. <laughs> where did he get these answers from? Like, where did, where, when that question got asked, did you think, I'm going to direct the Johnny Depp movies? Because I did. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, okay. <laughs> um, I got into it because I was in the Navy 20 years. I left, um, I had my own vape business, but I sort of, I, got, I get bored quite easily and need something to keep my mind occupied. Uh, watched a lot of YouTube videos on YouTube. That makes no sense. But you know what I mean. Um, and thought I could, I'd could, i give it a go. So I pretty much started doing it with an old Nikon camera that I had. Um, it, was only, it could only record in 1080. Uh, then I just sort of bought stuff, bought stuff, bought more stuff. Bought a lot of stuff, and now I've got. Didn't buy me a handbag though. I've been asking. No, I didn't buy a handbag, and then just kept buying stuff. But now I've got absolutely no background in filmmaking, editing, uh, anything. I just learned as I went along. This is from Open Golf Courses Now, which is a good point. I think we should make. Let's open golf courses now. How many days a week does Victoria let you out to golf? My wife kicks off through the summer when I'm barely home, two rounds a day. Um. I don't actually kick off. I just I do let him play as much golf as he wants. I don't, that's it. I actually prefer it when he's out of the house. <laughs> so that's why I let him go to golf. But even before, like I did this as a job, you kind of let me just. You, there's a kind of relationship we've got, though, isn't it? We just let each other do whatever we want to do. Like if you want to go somewhere, you go somewhere. If you want to do something, you do something. I prefer him not to be around me. So <laughs> that's how this marriage works. <laughs> Moving on. Gary Smith, curious to know how you and Lester earn money from Dan's channel. Not how much, but is it a percentage or a fixed fee? Obviously, Wilbur and Paul just do it to show off. Um, not really my place to talk about money because it's like a business and it's Dan's business. Um, I do get paid for the work I do, but I don't really like talking about money from somewhere else. I'm happy to talk about money from my channel, but money from somewhere else, uh, it's not really my place to say. What's your favorite open venue? That's from John Ward. Like, open is, is a golf tournament in the UK. What's your I know what it means. Well, what's your favourite venue? Mm. You don't actually know any, do you? I do. <laughs> well, um, Celtic Manor. It's got a nice spa. Not an open venue. But it is. It's not. <laughs> but it's not open at the minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. A special way. It's not open at the minute. I mean, at the moment, my favourite venue is Aldi's because it's open <laughs> and I like going shopping. And I can't go shopping because the shops are shut. Um, <laughs> for me, it's Royal Lytham St Anne's because I had the opportunity in my time in the Navy to actually be a steward there when Ernie Els won it a few years back. So that would be my favourite open venue and a course I'd love to actually play. Mark Brook, how tall are you, Lee? Seven foot. <laughs> uh, no, um, this is a weird one. I actually wake up six foot three and a half, but I go to bed at six foot two because I measured myself once. But I suppose six foot two is the answer, really. 
apart from in the morning when I'm six foot three and a half. Your body compresses during the day, your spine compresses and okay. you shrink. Like that's why at night, like you're literally a midget. Yeah, but we're the same size in bed, which freaks me out. <laughs> Just not. <laughs> Mark Heron, morning. Steak and ale or steak and kidney pie? I have both. What's my answer? Steak and ale. Why? Because you're an alcoholic. <laughs> I say things like that. Okay, no. Well, you can, but I'm not actually an alcoholic because <laughs> uh, I don't like kidneys. Have You've you ever... got two. Yeah, but I don't want to eat them. Okay. Have you, Travis G? Have you ever played golf in America? I have. <laughs> when did you play golf in America? When I went to America. Oh, okay. I went to New York and Virginia. And you played and golf. Florida. And played golf. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've never played golf in America because I've never been to America. So there. Okay. Let's shift target to Twitter. Um, gonna try and cover some from last week if we can, but I'm not gonna lie. I can't remember what we answered last week. It was a week ago. But these are the questions I put out on Twitter yesterday, um, or the, the post I put out on Twitter yesterday, and these are the questions that come in. So this one's from Fraser Beach. When will you be allowed to invite customers brackets as it's work in for a fitting will they be allowed to use some outdoor facilities to test regards Fraser tomorrow no uh, <laughs> just no so not open. no it's not open uh, can't invite customers down yet until lockdown lifts as soon as golf courses and facilities can open then as long as the fitting studio is finished it's our intention to open that up um, so customers will be able to come down. Yes, they'll be able to use the outdoor facilities as well to test. As for whether the golf course or Ashbury will be open, all depends on tiers. It basically needs to be tier one to open or all the restrictions gone just because of the way the actual resort works. It's not really a pay and play type of place, although they could open it up to pay and play and open the golf courses up. Question from uh, E Caddy, who's a friend of mine. He makes these like little trike bikes. Like, no. What do you mean now? You're not having one. Oh, okay. Question one, who loves Toby Jugs? Me. In the background, you've got a little collection going on, haven't you? Well, it's um, Tinker, Taylor, Soldier, Sailor, Rich Man, Poor Man, Beggar Man, Thief. There you go. There's those Toby Jugs. Uh, what sort of reptile is in the tank? Which tank? Oh, that's a tank. That's a tank. That's not really a tank. That's... It's Drago. You want to get him out? Bearded dragon. This is... And that's Drago. Drago. So he's a, a bearded dragon. Have you, got anything to, have you got anything to say? Probably not. No. There's Drago. Yeah. There he is. Hey, and that's what's in the tank behind us. We got him when he was that big. Tiny. That, that big. And now he's... That big. In your non, in your drag. Um, you staying out for the rest of the... Nope, he's gone. He's gone. Um, next question from DRC, Dean Seven Synergy. Looking forward to finding a new club to join. What do golfers look for most when looking to join a new club? Cost, layout, drainage, facilities, etc. So if you're going to go and join a new golf club, what would you be looking for? Um, I'd want it to be green. That would help. With holes. Yeah. No sand things. Bunkers. Yep. Um, drainage. Yeah, it needs to have some drains. <laughs> um, <laughs> layout. Mm. Now, what's the most important thing for you to join a golf club? The bar. <laughs> the clubhouse. <laughs> I think a lot of it's down to cost. Obviously, it's down to your budget and what you can afford, whether it be monthly basis or paying out. Um, I definitely think playability in winter is a big factor to, for me when it comes to looking for a club to join. Um, there's nothing worse than being shut for five or six months a year because of the it's unable to sort of cope with the, the, the weather and the water. Facilities... Oh uh, yes, but like my club has no facilities. It has no warm-up facilities whatsoever. So it's not a big factor for me. 
Um, I'm a member there because of the people as well. So I've, I've been a member there pretty much since like 2010 on and off. And I know the people there. So I'm mainly there for the people uh, and the golf course is getting a lot of investment into it, but definitely not facilities. It's whatever, whatever suits you and what you can afford, basically. Obviously, the more facilities generally, the more it costs. What is your dream destination stroke golf course for a golfing holiday? That's from Brian Treadwell. New York. New York's amazing. I went there once. There is actually a golf course in New York as well. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. So I'm part of the On Course Foundation, which is um, for injured veterans. Uh, they do something called the Simpson Cup, which happens, uh, I believe it's every year, and it alternates between Europe and America, and it's like a rider stop tile format. Um, for injured veterans of the of like the UK, maybe Europe and America, so I'm hoping to get qualify for that team this year. But lockdown is probably going to put a bit of a scuff on that. For me, my oh, I know where I want to go. Bora Bora. I... There's no golf courses in Bora Bora. Yeah, I don't care. I want to go. Well, that's Bora, not Bora, what I Bora. asked. Oh, right. well, go Bora Bora. Um, my my dream destination. <laughs> not be Bora Bora. Oh, I forget you can see me. Yeah, it would not be Bora Bora. It'd have to be America, but I'm not quite sure what course. Right, um, this is from Spollins JB. I'm building my 2021 bag and stuck at the hybrid wood section. I'm thinking leaning towards the G425 ping, but based on lofts, they are basically the same. Going ping based on historical use and reviews on YouTube. Easy to hit for a mid handicapper, and he's looking at four hybrid or a seven hybrid, but because they're the same lofts, what would you suggest? Yeah, do what you feel is best. Is that like your answer for everything? <laughs> like, just do what you feel is best. Um, it's all down to your deliveries and the numbers you get from them. There will be, although they're the same loft, the shaft length, um, I believe, will be slightly different. The, the more mass behind the head on the seven wood will promote more launch than the hybrid. So it's down to what you want, ball flight, numbers, just get fit. Like It's my answer for everything when people are deciding clubs, get fit. Don't go and spend £250 on a club off the shelf because it probably won't work as well for you as paying £250 for a club that you've been fit into. Um, a lot of places that fit, We'll charge you for the fitting, but we'll take the cost off the price of the club, so it doesn't actually cost you any more. Uh, will there be any deals for a fitting with you and hotel stays at Golf Ashbury? Yeah. What deals? Uh, buy one, get one free? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so the plan is for guests of Ashbury, people staying, um, to give them a discount on a club. It's going to be between 5 and 10%. So if you're staying at Ashbury, you book in for a fit-in, then you're hello, um, likely to get a bit of a discount on the actual club come the time you want to buy it. Are you planning to come up to the northeast with Dan and Lester? He's going to jump. Do you think he'll hurt himself if he jumps? No, he does it all. I think he'll jump on your bag. Yeah, he's going to jump on the bag. Oh, he'll do what he wants. Um, are you, are you planning to come up to the North East with... Ladies! <laughs> <laughs> That's him <Okay>. gone. <laughs> he landed on the bag. Kamikaze. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think once the lockdown ends, we're planning to do a lot of travelling, but it's just, we just can't get out, unfortunately. If you could change any two rules in golf, what would they be and why? Um... Get rid of bogeys. What's all that about? As in what? Like the score or the name? The name? Why would you call it a bogey? <laughs> Who came up with that? I Why? Don't know. I don't know. What's the other rule you get rid of? Them stupid sand things that you have. <laughs> the hazards. Yeah, what? why would you want a hazard? <laughs> That's a fair point. Fair point. I would get rid of the playing from a divot on the fairway rule. Finally, go to Instagram. First question uh, Who chatted who up first? You chatted me up? No, he chatted me up. No, I didn't. You chased me. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. 
Oh, I didn't. Yes, it did. I thought you were a lesbian at first. No, it did. Yeah, but then when you found out I wasn't, I don't know why you thought that. Well, because you came the first time you came into my office was with your friend, who my was a lesbian. The so I assumed you two were together. And then um, what happened was that you. Uh, what was that? Nothing. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. <laughs> well, I'll find out when I edit it. Okay. And I'll cut it out. No, you won't. I will. No. I don't know. It was kind of like a mutual chase, I think. Don't you? Yeah. We can always divorce me. Like, I don't mind getting another wife. Like, I don't mind having a third one. If it's that big of an issue. I can't be bothered with that. <laughs> Right, so the answer is, I think it was a mutual chase. Mm -hmm. You wanted me because of my power and authority, and I wanted you because you were fit. There we go. Um, this is a guy called Fergs. Do oh, we know him? God. Do we know this guy? Unfortunately. Who is the best fragrance reviewer in the world? Well, I'll tell you who it's not, and that's Fergs. Or <laughs> Mason and Co. Crew. Crew. So for those who don't know, Fergs, who's been on my channel before, the combat golfer, uh, we did a course vlog together at um, Came Down Golf Club in Dorset. He's decided that he's now going to do fragrance reviews on YouTube. So he's got a new channel called Mason and Crew. So if you're into your aftershaves and stuff, check that out. Um, it's actually quite interesting. As much as I want to give him a bit of crap for it, it's quite interesting and I bought a decent one that he reviewed the other day, didn't I? It does smell nice. And I do smell nice. For once. Um, <clears throat> next question. What's in your bag? No, Lee, not you. <laughs> what's in my bag? So, what's in your bag? So, well, before... well, you don't have a golf club bag, do you? No. Before Nora Rose, I would have had my Ted Baker handbag. Oh, name but... drop. I know, because I love, you know how much I love Teddy, but unfortunately I can't have one of them. So I have a baby changing bag. What's in it? Well, Do you actually want me to show well, me what's in it? What's in your bag? No Lee, not you. So you don't have a golf bag, so this is the only bag I can assume that they're interested in. Um, so well, what's in it? My purse. Right. Um, they're toy. <laughs> this is for Nora as well. The same for Nick. Yeah, yeah, of course it's for Nora, yeah. Um, this is the nappies in here and white. This is interesting, this, right? Yeah. Um, a spare vest, just in case. She's sick on it. Yeah, or worse. <laughs> a spare baby grow. It's quite pretty, look. Oh. A changing mat. Ooh. Ooh. A pound. <laughs> and a pound. Um, keys. No. Uh -uh. Um, another spare toy. So basically, just baby stuff. Oh, another pound. Hold on, let me look in the bottom. <laughs> of that. Is this my money? What's going on in here? What is it? Just the bag that keeps on giving. No way. Oh, twenty p. Obviously, fill out my purse. Oh my god! <laughs> I've, not, I've literally not planned this. You're never gonna guess what I've just found. Mm. <laughs> I'm ringing Dana. <laughs> I'm well happy. I've just found twelve pounds and twenty p. Not mine. Oh no! It was coming out of my bag. It must have fell out my purse. Um. So right. Anyway, no. that's what's in your bag. Like, can you get on with it? You go through all of your balls and clubs and. Okay, I know, I do, yeah. Some hand cream. My Ted Baker Ella perfume, travel perfume. Travel perfume. Well, that's why this is little. Um, you don't want to see those. <laughs> um, don't want to see what? Oh, <laughs> you can't say I don't want to see those and <laughs> then hide it. No, well, you don't want to see what? I always carry a spare pair of underwear with me. Do people want to see that? <laughs> no, no, God, no. I'm keeping this in. No, you're not. Edit this out. No, I'm keeping it in. Edit this out. No, I'm keeping it in. Do the people want to know that you carry a spare pair of underwear? You're not getting a pig and blanket with your Sunday dinner. Okay, that's fine. Um, compact, Ted Baker. Um, my lipstick and mascara, which is also Ted Baker. If they want to sponsor me. <laughs> I don't think they're watching this. 
He might. Ted might be. Just so you know, Ted, I've got a lot of stuff of yours. I could. Um, that's it. That's a it. Spare bottle, right. a pen. Right, put your crap away. Come on, let's get on with this. Take that other bit out. I'm not taking that out. Oh, yes. Right, I'm not getting a pig and blanket. Well, happy I found 10 quid there. <laughs> Right, um, while you're putting that away, next question. Vimto or Vibina? Vimto. 100% Vimto. 100% Vimto. How did you end up getting involved with Dan's channel? Well, Dan approached me because he's seen all my good movies that I've directed. And then he realised that my husband played golf. So he was like, ugh, right then. Well, being as I play golf, I might as well get involved with him and teach him how to play golf, because Lee didn't know how to play golf. So basically, me and Dan got together to help Lee play golf. <laughs> that's, that's, how that's how it happened, was it? Uh, <laughs> so basically, what happened was, Dan was... Um, I went to Dan for a driver fitting, and then I went to Dan on his journey. I did a like a journey, it's like a six month coaching plan. And it was towards the end of 2019, um, me and Dan just got talking and I was sort of saying like, why don't you go out on your own, do this by yourself, you've got everything you need. And Dan, obviously Dan has everything he needs in regards to thought, thoughts for content, but Dan knew nothing about YouTube. Obviously he'd worked on Mark's channel, but he knew nothing about how YouTube worked, analytics, a little little about editing, camera work and stuff like that. So I just said, look, well, I'll help you out to do it. If you want to do it, I'll edit some of your videos, I'll help you with cameras, etc. And then kind of just got more involved from there. And now we are where we are, where I get involved on coaching videos, course management videos, course vlogs. I do a lot of camera work. Um, Dan's started to do a lot more of the editing, so we kind of share the editing now, which is something he's really passionate about. So it's it's good. It, it works well, doesn't it? Yeah, and you're still no good at golf. So. And I'm still no good at golf. So, Dan, if you're watching this, um, I need some lessons. What do you do to increase more club head speed with driver? Hit it harder. <laughs> Hit the ball harder. Uh, it's difficult. It's all technique based. Lighter shaft, lighter head. Technique. There's there's many things that you can do to increase club head speed. Go to the gym. Um, I'd probably questions like that. You're better off speaking to a coach because they'll be able to look at your swing and see where you're losing power. Who would your preferred partner be on the bus tour if it was a big money game? Johnny Depp. No, no there's only five of us. What? The bus tour is me, Dan, Lester, Will, and Paul. Oh, I have, to pick, I have yeah, yeah. to pick one of you guys. Yeah, yeah. Dan. Why? I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> right, you already saw the baby out. For me, um, if it was a big money game, it would depend. If it was a one-off game, like 18 holes, then I would pick Will. Because I think he's got the, the drive and the game to go really low on like a one round basis. I, I, I've not really looked at his performance over a week, like a weekend, so to speak. But if it was a one game, 18 hole match, it would be Will. If it was a weekend tournament, it'd probably be Paul because he's got the, the knowledge of doing it over a weekend. Not a slight on Will. I think he can. he's going to do really well in the Euro Pro. But I think for the current time of, being able to put a game together over a weekend, it would be poor. Right, um, what's the journey to be a club fitter? Have you found it difficult not being a pro to get people in? Have I found, yeah, it's a difficult one. Why is it difficult? Because the golf course is a shot. Well, that's, that's a, certainly a good thing. Uh, have I found it difficult? Not difficult, I find it, I found it difficult to to get, um, what's what I'm looking for? Like recognition for it, because a lot of people think because I'm a 13 handicap, I don't know how to fit, which isn't the case. My playing ability and my like physical limitations that I have 
doesn't mean I don't understand how to how the golf swing works or how a club fitting works. I've done a lot of training, and this answers another question from last week. I've done a lot of training with the Titleist University, which is a series of courses about learning about their specific equipment, but it also goes into fitting. I've done ev I'm the highest level trained that foresight the people who do the GC quad. I've done their courses and their certification, so there is nothing higher than what I've done on that. Obviously, there's if they release more, then I'll do it. But at the minute, there's only the two levels, and I've done them both. I've got training off Alex Orca. I get information, and I, I've got Dan to pick brains too. So for regards to my knowledge of fitting, yes, you know, I'm still only into it two years, so to speak. But I think the main thing is getting people thinking that because I'm a, a handicapped golfer, I don't know what I'm doing. And the way I kind of look at it is Andre Villas-Boas was the coach for Chelsea, but he never played professional football. You know, it's all, he's he did it through training and courses and learning. So that's all I'm doing. I think that's pretty much covers it this week. What do you think, Nora? Have you got any questions? Got any answers you want to give? No, not today. No, just going to sit and look at the camera. Um, so next week, yeah, let us know. Possibly go live if we, uh, if we, want to and people want it but otherwise thanks for watching please consider subscribing to the channel and if we don't see you live next week we'll see you for another q a next week shall we mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see you later Bye.